Hello everyone, welcome back, Robert Dempster here. In this video I want to show you one of my concepts and I'm going to run through all of these layers and hopefully you're going to see how the lessons that we have done uh, have been implemented into this concept. So all the same techniques apply and I'm going to run through this. Now these layers, uh, I haven't named them, it's all a bit messy if I'll be honest. Um, we'll definitely do a lesson on organization, but for now I just want to run through some of these layers and you can see some of the effects uh, in this concept. So this was the end result and I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning, back to the original image. Now because as you're creating the concepts, you're going to be editing the images as you go along. So the image isn't going to be exactly the same as the way that you uh, imported it in. So in this example, I stretched the canvas out to make it much wider. In fact, I think this is e even more than a 16 by nine aspect ratio, but I liked how long it was. So I kept it at that ratio. I've stretched this image out. Uh, you can see that there's some, you know, eraser marks here. That's because I've erased it uh, later on in that, um, whilst I've been creating the concept. And I've also just cut out some of these doors. So I've got this, I'll, I'll try and do it in order. This was the first image that I started with. And what I'll usually do is I'll think about the lighting. Okay, so where is the lighting going to be in this image? So in this case, I wasn't too sure. And I'll be honest, when I started this concept, I didn't really know what I was going to create. I've got an awful lot of uh, reference images that I wanted to use. So um, sometimes, you know, late at night, you just want to create something. So you just start dragging and dropping some images and let's see what happens. So again, first thing I think about is what's my base? So I've got this base image, so drag that on. Then I'll think about maybe what kind of lighting I want to add. So here I wanted the lighting to come from above this roof area so this light would shine down here and I'm just going to turn on some of these layers that are underneath it so I felt like the image was slightly too open so I wanted to bring it in a little bit more on the left hand side so I just added these images and originally I was going to have this boarded into this wall with this door uh, that was open it's like a large garage door that would be kind of just smashed through you can see the wood on the floor here and then maybe there would be another room here. So again, you know, at this stage, I'm just experimenting. I'm seeing what works. Now, with that idea in mind, um, this was very messy and I would have to have done uh, quite a lot of painting. And when you're creating a concept, you want to be as quick as possible. Uh, you want to try and get as many concepts out um, within that time frame. So I found this image and I thought, okay, great. So this does the same thing. It borders it in but it's cleaner and I've got my windows excellent. You know, I'm gonna need to paint all of this stuff out. I don't want that, but let's move on. So we've got our lighting. We know it's on the inside now. We've got something that's through this door as opposed to just a, you know, a blank screen. And then I start to add more textures. So in this image, I've got some, you know, wet dirt textures here. And also this shows that actually maybe this doesn't go completely outside. Maybe this is actually a window that goes through to another room. So again, a bit of experimentation there. And I'll be honest, sometimes you just get lucky. You'll throw on an image and you think, hey, I didn't think that was going to work. I think it works. Let's continue. Yeah, and that's the beauty of Photoshop. You can always just delete these images if you don't want them. So I'm going to go through so again I've added a new image this time and I've used my free transform to skew that into place okay remember the graffiti lesson and I have again decided well maybe I want to actually have this you know to, to look outside and I've got this smash window effect here so again experimenting with it and again I'm also looking at the um, the colors as well so if on the inside it's going to be very cool and gritty then maybe on the outside i want to have you know the view of nature and the green as a contrast color uh here this was actually an image of a if i just turn this to normal 
of an interior of a um of a factory that had loads of uh like mechanical red beams but i set that to lighten and i just really liked the way it added a little bit of a red accent there it doesn't do anything for the image but it's almost like a little nod to what i could add in the future yeah so you think well yeah maybe something red should go there and let's see how that goes later on so i then dragged this other image on and again i'm just experimenting because i wanted to try and keep it a little bit more enclosed it felt a little bit too open at this stage so i wanted to bring it in a little bit more and with this image this kind of nails it for me this is where i think okay i can start building on this now once you get to the stage where and of course that's if you're using this technique if you're using images um you get to the stage where you think okay i've built all of the foundations now now it's literally just a matter of me cleaning up the image getting rid of things that i don't want you know painting into it a little bit more any areas that don't make sense like this walls just suddenly disappearing here then i'm going to need to paint that and then really just study what you've got there yeah so again at this stage i kind of feel like this is where it's getting to uh, then i can start moving on and adding a little bit more details so here i've just added a little bit of a um, a bush there uh, this area here didn't make any sense anymore so i wanted it so that this wall had kind of um kind of collapsed and it was showing outside and we had just the um, the door that was left you always want to be wary of what's in your foreground midground and background so in my midground is where i knew i wanted some sort of character to be sitting uh, i didn't know at the time what they were going to be sitting on but this image really helped here this little wooden beam so I had them sitting on that. Uh, in the background is going to be our light. And it's also where we're going to have our symbol, uh, which I'm going to paint on later. Now in the foreground, not much is going on. So I need to add something in the foreground. So sometimes it's good to just stop, maybe walk away, you know, grab a drink um, or sleep on it. Wake up the next morning and then have a look at it and think, right, okay, so what am I going to do next to this image? So in this case, it's finding a foreground element. Okay, so I've added this. And again, very sloppy, drag and dropped. I've used the lasso tool. I've cut around that image. Uh, I've even used a little bit of the eraser there, but we can clean it up later. Now, you'll see that as I uh, go along with this concept, that I also use the curves tool. Okay, and I've got that as a mask. And that's just going to give me a little bit more flexibility on where I'm going to add my lights, my darks. So I know my light source is coming from just above this building here. So I want to keep that predominantly light and on the inside, it's going to be a little bit darker. Okay, so there I've added the dark and then I can start painting in a little bit more of that light, adding some nice, you know, bloom effects, a little bit of smoke in the background, make it just a little bit more atmospheric. So again, at this stage, I need to start cleaning up the image, start painting things out that I don't want. I didn't want this, so I painted that out. Uh, what you could do there, again, I've done this quite quickly, uh, so it's a little bit messy, but you could just select this image here, copy and paste it, move it over, and uh, I might have done that later on. Let's have a look. But yeah, you can always just um, copy the textures that are already in the image. So yeah, there we go, <laughs> literally the next layer. That's what I've done. So again, going through curves and brightness, thinking about my light source, where do I want my light to be? Uh, you can see that I've just added a little bit of light here. Uh, this doesn't really make sense to um, where it is now, but when I add the character, it will make a little bit more sense. Right, again, making it darker and darker. Uh, I didn't actually do this on this computer screen, so it's looking very dark on mine. I'm not sure about yours. Um, I think I brighten this up later. Anyway, so we got the fire. And again, like I've explained in another video, you could use that blend if, or in this case, I've used the lighten layer. 
Okay, and that's just removed all the darks from the image and it's only kept the fire. So if I just turn that to normal, we can see it's just a black background with the fire. If I set that to lighten, it's going to remove that black and keep that fire. Again, painting in some elements. Uh, I've got a shadow here where the character will be. And in this case, uh, I've edited quite a few of these images and uh, dragged and dropped some of them on, didn't really like them. Um, so I've deleted them and I felt like this one worked. I've also added some characters where I've had to change their legs or paint legs in because they, they didn't have um, it that like the image was cropped. Uh, again, adding lighting. And here I've just made it a little bit softer. You can see that there's quite a lot of hard edges here. I've just made it a little bit softer there. And um, you can do that just by copying the entire image. You can press Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And you can see that that's going to flatten that entire image and move it directly on top. You can go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur the whole thing. Uh, in fact, we could go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur and set this so it's at 90 or whereabouts. Click OK. And then we could go through our layer. Yeah, light, and that's looking pretty good. And then use that eraser and then just erase the areas that you don't want to be soft. Okay, that's a pretty cool technique there that I use every now and then. Again, adding a character, and in this case, um, the head was different, so I changed the head. Um, there was a crop here, so I had to add the legs, and then I just add this um, rubbish bag in front of his leg. So there's multiple images there, but it looks like it's just one, because I flattened them. Okay. Again, clean up. So these bricks are just kind of falling into silhouette. There's not much going on there. So I've selected them with the lasso tool and just painted over them. Ooh, battery's going. Always remember, keep your laptop charged. Okay, so again, more paint. And you may notice as well that, that you know, it, it's not very uniform. You can, especially when you walk away from this and you come back and you think, okay, what am I going to add? I mean, at this point, I, I, I didn't have a brief, so I'm just making it up as I go along. So you, you'll paint one area and then you think, oh, maybe I'll go do some research for a bit and find what find some images that I want to add and then I'll add that image and I'll do that for a bit and then I'll move on to something else so uh, this is just really fun this is just a fun little exercise to to do just to create something new now I wanted to go over this this is quite interesting so with this um, trolley with all this rubbish on that was just uh, very bright so the original image would have looked like this and you know of course I've, I've cut around the image and um, overlaid that on top so yeah the original image was quite bright it was like this so what I've done is I have duplicated that image and I've got two different versions now so I've got one that I've dropped down with image brightness and contrast and brought the brightness down that one's duplicated on top with a mask so with that mask I'm able to just add a little bit more light. So let, let me just do this now, just to make this a little bit clearer. So I've got my darken layer, and I'm going to duplicate it on top. Go to Image Adjustments, and we'll do Curve, just to bring this up. Let's make it really bright. There we go. I've then added a mask, and then with my brush, and I'll set this to a soft brush for now. I can start to remove some of that light. Okay, so now I've got my darkened area. The light's coming from this direction. It's going to be darker here and lighter there. So that, that's the exact same effect. Okay, 
So using those masks and layers to your advantage. It's also, you want to check your contrast level. So this is going to fall, uh, it's going to have a, a lower contrast and it's going to be a slight bloom mist effect, okay, as the light's coming down. So I've just added a layer there just to kind of push it back further into the background. And if you're unsure, you can always just use a black and white layer on top. Okay, check your values this way. I'll just delete that. Okay, so I, again, they're all just sitting there, so I've added some weapons in their hands. Um, and then I've added uh, some symbols. Now this guy, again, I had to paint the legs in. I think he was sitting on a bench, so I just cut and paste his legs, made them fold, and he was actually feeding a pigeon. But, you know, why not put a gun in his hand? <laughs> it's the apocalypse, why not? Okay, so we've got the fire effects, we've got smoke effects. Slow to start painting into this. And you can also see that I've duplicated the character and I've added a little bit of a wiggle there, as you can see through the flames. Some distortion. And a chair, you know, just to fill in that space. You know, just add in some small props. So essentially you have to imagine that you were building the scene in real life yeah so if this was a scene from a film what kind of props would you add yeah so again at this stage you're just going online collecting some images thinking about um, what props you would add to the scene so I've just done a slight color adjustment there I've added a color balance and I've made it a little bit cooler uh, I do change it later I've added a flattened layer on top i've sharpened it and i've just added some little um more smoke effects there out of the dog backpack again this was looking a little bit too contrasty so i've added that nice light bloom effect that's just with the soft brush i've used that large round soft brush added orange set it to screen load the opacity and there we go. More adjustments, added a gradient map just to remove some of the dark areas of the image, just to brighten that up a little bit more. And then right at the end, I'll flatten the entire image. Add a little cigarette there. And I'll do one last adjustment on that flattened layer. So in this case, I wanted it just a little bit more uh, warmer, made it a little bit more red, I've added a slight grain and I've added a, um, a sharper mask. Yeah, so, I mean, I could add more to this. I could add more details here. I could add posters. I could add a little bit more light here. Um, but, you know, as a concept goes, that's pretty much done. Yeah, unless your art director says that, you know, it wants to see a little bit more uh, props in the scene that are pivotal to, you know, what's going to happen within the scene, then, yeah, sure, you can add them. But just to experiment and have fun, then, you know, try it yourself. Get a load of images. Um, you can watch some films. You might uh, take some screenshots of films and you want to try and replicate that. Then, you know, go for it. But this technique is really good just to open your mind to, um, to creating your own concepts. Again, all of these techniques that I've just shown you, we've learned in previous lessons. They're just a little bit more advanced. And you have to kind of know what technique to use whilst you're making these concepts. The main um, main techniques we've used here, in fact, in this one, I haven't used Blendiv at all. Uh, I've only used the light and, and normal layers, so you don't have to use it. But it does make your life much easier when you use these blended um, or Blendiv effects. Okay, so if you have any questions, then feel free to ask me and I'll see you in another video. Take care. Bye.